Hello everybody and welcome back. We've played around in the EV render engine. Let's go ahead and play with cycles. The first thing we need to do is on the render properties, scroll up to the top and we're going to switch this to the render engine so that it's cycles. Now at the moment we're in solid shaded mode for the viewport shading options and we're about to change it to rendered mode. Now whenever you render in Blender, whether it's a final render or it's just playing around in the viewports, always a good idea to make sure you've saved your work. Anytime you activate rendering, well, in my experience, that's a good way of experiencing a crash within Blender. So just be aware of that. Now we're going to run through some of the options here. We're going to dart up and down because there are some really important ones that we need to have a look at early on. Let's change to rendered mode. And we can see here, this is quite grainy, it's quite noisy compared to Eevee. And this is one of the benefits of Eevee. It tends to be nice and smooth in comparison and also a bit quicker. But what you get with Cycles is often far more realistic. And there are denoising options that we can use to help speed up our workflow as well. Okay, so let's have a look at these render properties. And as I said, we're not going to go through absolutely every one of them, but we'll go through the main ones that you need to be aware of. First of all, we've got a feature set. Later on, we're going to have a look at why we might want to switch that to experimental, but otherwise we can keep it as supported for the moment. Experimental features, you might experience more crashing. So hopefully we don't experience any crashing. So let's keep things stable and supported for the moment. Device is CPU, and we can go ahead and switch that to GPU if you have a compatible GPU. Now you may find that you've got a compatible GPU, it's just not turned on. And very early on, we had a look at this. Let's cover it again quickly. If we go ahead and go to our preferences, make sure you're on the system tab. You've got a couple of options under the cycles render devices. You can have none, which will just generally use the CPU. You can use CUDA. Now CUDA itself is NVIDIA and it's proprietary, but you can use it on both a graphics card if you have one from NVIDIA and your processor as well. And people are often tempted to tick both boxes. I've not yet seen a system where that's a good idea. And we'll see why when we get down to tile size. For the moment, my 3070 is far, far faster than my processor is, so I'm going to make sure that that is ticked. So if I'm using CUDA, I'm not being held back by the processor. Optics is a relatively new feature, and we can see here not all Cycles features are supported yet. But if you have one of the 2000 or 3000 series or an RTX card from NVIDIA, you can take advantage of this. And that's what I'm going to have mine set to at the moment. There are only a few features that aren't supported that I actually care about, and in general, I'll be fine with that. Finally, OpenCL, if you've got an AMD card, that's the one that you'll want to pick. Let's close down preferences. Well, let's make sure it's set to optics first and then close it down for me. So I'm going to switch my device now to GPU compute, and it will render much quicker. And we can see that just by moving around, it will render out. And you can see those 32 samples that it's using are counting up very, very quickly. So 32 samples, that looks like the same as the viewport sampling options down here. So we'll move on to this really quick and then we'll have a look at the performance option underneath where we can adjust tile size. So rendering, you may be tempted when you press F12, this is the setting it's going to use. And you may be tempted to just crank that up as high as it can go so you get a much smoother image without all of these speckles in it. And in general, the darker your scene is, the more likely you will experience noise. So in general, if you can't use any of the denoising features, you'll have to keep turning this up and up. Now, for every time you double the sample count, it will double the time it takes to render. So let's go to the rendering tab here and go to slot one. We may have other things already stored there and I'm just going to render out. And we can see here it's whizzing around. It's relatively quick on my computer. It's not optimized yet and we'll adjust the tile size in a bit. But this has taken nine seconds to render out. If I switch to slot two and still have the render properties out here and I set this to eight samples it's going to be a lot quicker. Let's press F12. And if we go between slot one and two, we can see that it's much, much noisier, but it did take a lot less time. So if you don't care about the quality, if you just want an overall feel, then lower your sample count. 
If you do care about the quality, you may want to turn your sample count up. So in slot three, we'll go ahead and turn this up to 1024. We're really going to push it out here, and I would not recommend in general going that high. However, we've got a render happening in front of us here. Look how much smoother that is. I can now adjust my slots. I can go from one to two to three, even though it's still rendering in the background. And this is obviously a lot smoother. And a lot of the speckles that we had with 128 samples, they're almost gone and imperceivable. But this isn't really a solution. This is going to take another 30 seconds to render out. I'm going to hit escape. I don't want to wait for it. There are other options and optimizations we can do than just increasing the sample size. So before we go on to our denoising options, let's optimize cycles for the device we are actually using. So if we go down to performance, we've got an option here to auto detect. And if you needed, and if you needed your CPU to be doing something else, you can actually fix this and turn down the number of threads. You can't go higher than the number of threads that your computer has, but I've got 12 cores, 24 threads, as we can see when it's auto detected. But if I needed some of those cores for other things, I could perhaps lower that down to 20 and give my computer a bit of breathing room. I'm gonna leave that as auto detected though. But this is the really important thing here, your tile size. If you're rendering on a CPU, it needs to be a smaller number. And if you're rendering on a GPU, it has to be a bigger number. Let's really emphasize this point. Let's switch back to CPU for a moment and go back to slot one. And let's turn the render samples back to 128. So it's nice and simple. You can right click and reset to a default value. But the other thing you can do here, uh, I didn't mention it before when I was talking about this, is you can just hover over a field and hit the backspace key and it automatically does it. I found that one out by accident, nice. Okay, so tile sizes, we've set to CPU render. In fact, I'm gonna hide sampling for at the moment so we can focus on the performance and changing the tile settings. If I set this to its lowest amount, which is eight, and press F12 to render, those little squares that are going round represent the number of threads that my CPU has. And so they're able to do 12 of those eight by eight pixels each time for each core. You can see that's whizzing round and it's probably going to take the best part of 40 seconds or so to complete. But you can't always tell that because this blank area at the top here is much, much quicker than the surfaces that are rendering. So sometimes this remaining time can be completely wrong. Okay, so the total time that took was about 39, 40 seconds. I'm gonna to go to slot two, close that down for the moment and try 32 and now press F12 to start rendering. Now you can see that the tiles themselves are indeed bigger, and I don't know, it looks like it might be around the same time. Let's leave that to finish off, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, and we're back. That took 30 seconds, so that's a good saving. That's a 25% saving on our time. Well, we're, if we're just increasing it, you may think, well, it might be better to go for 128 then, if it's getting quicker and quicker. Now, there comes a certain point at which that won't be the case. If you go too large, and I'll show that in a moment, but if you go too large, then you end up not fully utilizing your CPU. You end up with areas where your cores are not being utilized. So this actually looks like it's going to be pretty good. And the more powerful your computer, the quicker this process will be. And it's coming in around 30 seconds again. So this was actually slightly slower. And it will depend, and this is important, on the scene you're rendering. This is quite a simple scene. If you load up one of the free scenes that you can get from the Blender website, you can really pressure your system and work out what settings are good for your computer. I'm going to leave this for the moment at 32 for my CPU. Now, I don't often use my CPU for this purpose. I use my GPU because it's a lot faster. I'm going to leave it at 32 for the moment, and I'm going to go to slot 3. I'm going to press F12, and we can see there's only one square this time, and it's darting around the screen because the GPU is just so much better at doing this process. So before, we were talking about maybe 30 seconds, but this time... 13 seconds that's fantastic however it can be better gpus benefit from a larger tile size if you're very fortunate and have more than one gpu in your computer you'll actually see two of those squares going round but just like combining the cpu and gpu option that we had before i wouldn't recommend it unless your cards are very similar in their performance 
Let's go ahead here and set this now at 256 by 256. We know that would be slower with the CPU, but let's go ahead and try it with the GPU. Let's go to slot four and press F12. Now the size of the tile is obviously a lot larger than it was before and we're still racing around. You can see this bit at the top is quicker. That was twice as quick, wow. So between our previous setting and this one, we've half the time pretty much. So having the right settings for your scene can really speed up your render performance. Now let's have a look at some other optimizations that can happen. Having the right settings here, and I encourage you to play with them and see what's good for your system on multiple scenes is great. And I highly recommend that you try different settings on your computer because that's important. It's your computer. It's going to be different from other people's making sure that you're rendering at a decent resolution as we've mentioned before. All of these sort of things can really help speed up your workflow. Let's go back to slot one and we're gonna play with denoising. So let's render something out at the samples are currently 128. Let's just see how quick that happens again. I think that was our seven second one. This will be our baseline in terms of quality. So we've got a frame time here of six seconds. That's so a little less this time round. Let's go to slot two and have a look at what happens when we turn on denoising. So instead of increasing the render samples, thus taking longer, it will get a higher quality. We're gonna try some of the denoising that comes along with Blender. And we've got two options, the render and the viewport. The viewport is when we've got rendered mode turned on here and the render is your final render output. Now there are three different options when it comes to rendering out. On this particular scene, they're gonna be all pretty equal. In general though, my experience tells me that NLM, optics and open image denoise, actually the quality is more in line with how it is written down here. So we're on slot two, let's try NLM and render out. And you'll notice that the actual rendering time itself is about the same. But notice that this tile is dotting around. It's going through and it's denoising the scene. And if we compare that to slot one, it's visibly less noisy. Let's zoom in to an area that would naturally be noisy and switch between the two. So it's a lot smoother. So the denoising is doing its job. Now you have to be careful with denoising. If you decide to lower your sample count too low and therefore getting a quicker render, denoising can end up smudging your image and erasing any detail you've got. Okay, let's come out of that and try optics. Go to slot three and render. Now this will also be quite quick to go through. We can see it is almost done. The last one took 10 seconds, this one took seven. So there's a small increase in the time it takes to render, but it doesn't clear up all of the fireflies and other noise that's there. And in fact, in this particular case, it does look quite smudgy. Let's go to slot four and switch to open image denoise. Now, typically this is what I would use, but it runs on your CPU, so it may be a lot slower. Let's go ahead and render this out and then just talk about the time it's taken to do things. And here we go, we can see there are, are more tiles, it's using the CPU and going around and doing the denoising and it's taken 11 seconds, 12. Okay, it's, it's a lot longer, it's almost twice as long, but the quality is much, much better. Now it will depend on what you're trying to achieve. If I was rendering out a rough animation, I'd certainly do the lower value. If I was rendering out a animation that needed high fidelity and it needed a good quality image, then I'm gonna use open image denoise. And as always, it's really important that you're rendering out to your desired platform with the appropriate quality settings, size settings, etc. Not just rendering out the highest quality that you could possibly have. Let's have a quick look at the viewport. There's nothing really special here to go through, but if we turn on viewport denoising, we can see on automatic, it knows that I've got an Nvidia graphics card. It is going to use optics, and we can see that's quite quick in the viewport for me. I can also switch this to open image denoise, and it's a bit slower. It's, again, it's being done on the CPU, but we get a really nice quality result. Now you may find that if you do want to use denoising in your viewport, that it's just too slow if you've got your start sample set to one. We've currently got 32 samples in the viewport, so let's set the start sample at 16. So now, when we're moving around with open image denoise, you can see that it's all grainy to begin with, we can position it, and then when we let go, 
it can now start doing the rest of the rendering. And the same is true with optics. We can get that beginning bit done before it starts doing the denoising. Okay, wow, we've gone through quite a bit there in terms of optimization. Let's have a look at a few other settings. First of all, the light paths. In this simple scene, this is not going to make a difference to what we set these as. But in some other scenes, you may find that tweaking these will either increase the quality or just speed up the render. There can be an appreciable difference. Let's have no bounces and see what happens. Well, we seem to have not lost too much fidelity. Let's go in to the rendering tab at the top here in the workspace and set this to slot five and just render that out so we can genuinely compare it from one side to the other. Now, when there is no light bouncing, we're only seeing light that has hit a surface and bounced directly to the camera, no other bounces. And if we compare that to slot four, you see that the overall image is darker. That's because things aren't being reflected. Light isn't bouncing. However, the time difference between these two, bearing in mind the only thing we've changed is the light paths. I can't see much of a difference. It's slightly quicker, but the image quality is a lot less because of that. So let's go back to light paths quickly. And I don't know what these values were, so I'm going to hit the backspace key over the top of them all and reset them to default. Like most things in Blender, the default settings are pretty good. Okay, volumes. Just like Eevee, volumes are expensive. It's often quicker to fake volumetrics than to use them realistically. However, there will be times like smoke simulations that you do need to go ahead and use a volume rather than trying to fake it. But there are optimizations that we'll discuss later on that we can use instead of a volume. And there are a few other options here we're going to skip over, mainly because we can't demonstrate them. I'd rather do them in a more practical sense. Film, just like Eevee, and I think I forgot to mention this in the last video, but with the film option here, if we put a tick in transparent and go to layout briefly, we can see that the background area is now transparent. So if you're rendering out with a PNG, and well, let's actually do it. Let's shift this around. I'm going to move the view. I'm going to lower it down so that Suzanne's head is still in frame, but we've got more background there. Now when I render out, that background will indeed be transparent, which is pretty awesome because now you can put text or this in front of something or composite it into another image without worrying about the grey background that's there. Freestyle, I didn't cover that again in the last video, but this gives you a very nice drawn aesthetic. It outlines your model and its creases and it gives a really nice look to your models. It won't always be suitable. It does depend on your end goal and what your aesthetics are. But if we let that now do the freestyle, which is something that's done after the fact, we can see at the top here, it currently says freestyle stroke rendering. That can take a while to do. And we get an effect much like this, a bit more comic book like. And then finally, at the bottom here, we have color management. We've had a look at that before. We can change the contrast of our scene between low or very low and very high contrast. And playing with this can change the overall feel of your scene as well. And like most things, it is contextual. It will depend on what you're doing at the time. Okay, so that wraps up Cycles Rendering. Now that will give you all of the basics that you need in order to optimize your computer and get some decent results whilst using Cycles. Cycles is intensive on a computer and if you set your samples too high or your resolution too high, you're just going to be waiting ages for some output. So just be aware that cranking things up and making them look pretty may mean that you end up waiting a very long time for a result. And to be quite honest, when your models look this simplistic, like they are currently, then I wouldn't worry too much about the overall render quality. Get an image out there, share it with the world. And as I've said repeatedly, I'd love to see what your scenes currently look like after you've played with the settings in Cycles. So do share those with me. I'm looking forward to seeing them and I'll see you all in the next lecture.